Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hey Shady Lady, and today we're going to be doing a flip through of a tarot deck that I got like almost a month ago, but I have not even unboxed it at all yet because I wanted to save it for a video. I wanted to uh, have that experience here with y'all. So today we are unboxing the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Tarot deck. I have had my eye on this, no pun intended, this deck for a very long time. I have seen some of the cards before and I have had my tarot read with this deck a few times um, by some of my friends and fellow tarot streamers. This year I really want to work more with animal archetypes and get more comfortable with animal symbolism, especially because I see animals pop up in my dreams um, a lot as I'm sure most of us do. Specifically I've been seeing a lot of horses lately. Next week we'll be doing a collective reading, pick a card tarot reading actually, for the new moon in Gemini. So See you next week if you want that. So yeah, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and begin the unboxing experience of this tarot deck. The plastic is actually already kind of ripped. Okay, so first things first, this is quite a big box for a tarot deck. This is one of the biggest containers I have for a tarot deck. It's covered in a holographic sleeve. I don't want to rip the sleeve. Oh, maybe we actually don't need to keep the sleeve because look how nice the actual box itself looks. So the actual box itself is a beautiful solid white. Um, it's very minimal with uh, the decorations on it, which I kind of like. This would actually be really beautiful just sitting up on a bookshelf, to be honest. And we have the holographic sleeve here, which probably don't need to keep. So this was also a fairly expensive um, deck. It was, I, I got it off Amazon. I can't remember um, how much I did end up paying for it, but it says $40 on the box, which is probably accurate. So I'm gonna lift that lid and just take a peek inside. And we have an upside down book. May you always be on the inner quest, says the inside. Oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna get this so dirty. I don't like, <laughs> oh wow, the book is good. The book is nice. That's a thicky, thick boy book. The book is very, that's a very girthy book. <laughs> I hate the word girthy, I'm sorry. Oh, and it's separated into elementals. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look at this book before we start to get into the cards. So the book is over 200 pages long. It's very nice. It's got a, an entry on every individual card in the deck. We have a table of contents. The eagle meets the rabbit, which looks like it's a preface or a little blurb from the author. Very cute little, little doodle inside here understanding the deck. Long since the beginning of time, animals have played an integral role in the story of humanity. In creation myths far and wide, you will find complex and transformative relationships between creatures and humans. Let your mind go way, way back to simpler times and ancient civilizations where half man, half beasts roam the earth. Serpents and trees tempted humans with fruit. Sirens sang along the water's edge. Ravens delivered messages and fish whispered prophecies. Then let the countless paintings covering cave walls in Lascaux, France, and throughout Europe take you back over 17,000 years. And what are our civilization's very first paintings of? Creatures and humans. Some believe the images tell the stories of great hunting excursions. Others believe they are records of our earliest shamanic rituals depicting our ability to commune with nature. Either way, these early cave paintings, along with myths from every culture across the globe, remind us of our eternal fascination with creatures of the wild. We see a soaring bird and have to wonder, how? The sheer strength of horses changed the progress of our nations. Many times in myths, the interfacing with a creature becomes the defining moment in the story, from the snake in the Garden of Eden to Manu and the fish. Animals are woven deeply into our human story and we continue to be woven into theirs. It's no surprise we are so intimately tied to them, as creatures big and small lead us humbly toward the divine. I say this because animals naturally inspire reverence and wonder. We are transfixed by a peacock's tail, curious about a cheetah's spots, speechless when we see a whale surface. Anytime we approach a state of awe, we are in relationship with divinity. We are awake. While you work with the animal spirit cards, I encourage you to resist the idea that there is a right or fixed interpretation out there, to resist the notion that our relationship to animals belongs to any one system, nation, era, or culture. 
Instead, contemplate the possibilities that these sacred creatures reside within all of us, as they always have. Relating to the mysterious creatures of our earth is as intrinsic as breathing. We long for the sacred, and therefore we long for our connection to the wild. Animals take us out of our human ego mindsets and into the realm of magic and possibility. Take part in this tradition, this deeply human tradition, and let the creatures guide you toward the divine within. There could be no greater gift to Mother Nature. And we have this little squiggly here showing animals and humans totally connected and leading up to divinity. So I feel like this preface, understanding the deck, sets the tone very, very nicely. And we have a couple more sections here, natural selection, sort of showing how dog evolved, dog evolved from wolf, cat from cheetah. Got a little overview of the different elementals, earth, creatures of the field and forest, water, creatures of the oceans, rivers, lakes, fire, creatures of the desert and grasslands, air, creatures of the sky. And then we have spirit, creatures of the other. So we have the five symbols here, the alchemical symbols for the five elements, spirit, air, fire, water, earth. So already we're off to a great start with this deck. I love that this is going to get me familiar with uh, different elementals and how those elementals kind of manifest and that I'm going to be working a lot with different types of animals. So I will understand more about uh, the archetypes and symbolism that go into these different animals. We have a section here on using the deck. What's my spirit animal? Which I don't think is a cool phrase to use anymore. <laughs> what to ask? Before you start a reading, acknowledge what you're looking for. A few questions. What energy would help resolve this conflict? What will I encounter today? What part of myself have I forgotten? Are some like suggestion questions the book has? When to ask it? Caring for your deck? Shuffling and cutting? A card a day? Past, present, future three card reading. Past and the obstacle two card reading. Relationship spread four card reading. Year ahead spread 13 card reading. We have a section called deeper insights. The card order, there are no numbers. Once you start to shuffle, there's not really an order. There's a thread of logic that runs through the elements though. The food web, apex predators. So we have a wolf, uh, a hawk, an eagle and an owl listed as apex predators. God, the rabbit's food for everything. All these poor babies. <laughs> the nature connection. And then we get to the section of the book called the wild unknown animal spirit, which is where we're going to actually start getting into the different cards. You can see how much of the front of the book is dedicated to different spreads and sort of understanding how uh, how the deck works and the way that the intention of the creator behind this deck. We'll take just a quick look at the layout of how the cards are explained in this. So we have the earth section and the first animal we come to is a bear. So on the left hand side we get a full spread of the card itself, not colored. And then we have a short section. Yeah, so it's a one page section. We have a one sentence summary, waking from spiritual slumber, beginning anew. And then we have a paragraph. After a long winter, the bear arises from deep slumber. At first, the movement and effort are difficult, but the bear knows it's time to awaken and move toward the dawning light. The bear card represents an individual on the cusp of new directions and personal transformation. The initial weeks and months of this spiritual guest may feel tricky, cumbersome, and full of obstacles. But you have no choice, bear. Winter wanes, the warmth of spring emerges, and your transformation begins. And then at the bottom, we have a couple of sections. When in balance, you will feel inner strength and yearning to grow. When out of balance, you will feel withdrawal, lethargy, and heaviness. And to bring it into balance, you need movement and exercise. I love, love, love the way that this is laid out. This might be one of my favorite guidebooks that I've gotten to go along with a non-traditional tarot deck. So it tells you when this is in balance, which would be could be an upright reading, or maybe I also like that this deck, the way that this book is laid out, it feels like it's not necessary to read reversals, but you can read the card as a whole and then kind of include, like when you're feeling imbalanced, you're gonna have these things and that things. Uh, when you're out of balance, you might feel withdrawal, lethargy, and how to get rid of this, bring this into balance, you need to get into some movement and some exercise. I I love this. It's gonna this this feels like a really nice deck for beginner readers. If you don't want to go the route of starting with a writer weight and on the traditional tarot feeling, this feels like a really cool deck to start with, especially if you're an animal lover. 
And then just to give another example of how the balance section reads, for the earthworm, when you're in balance, you'll feel earnest, intelligent, and valuable. When you're out of balance, you'll feel self-conscious and apprehensive. And in order to fix this self-conscious, apprehensive energy, you need to speak up and risk embarrassment or be less afraid of embarrassment. So this is, this is very, very cool. And it looks like it just goes through... Yeah, it just goes through the, the entire last section of the book is all just for the cards. There's no ending section. There's no space in this book for notes or anything like that. Um, although I personally don't normally use tarot books to keep notes in. Let's take a look now at the actual deck. So we'll bring this box back over. We'll pop this out. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, so this little section seems to lift out. Yes, it does. And the ribbon is connected here. So then we just have like a nice a nice box honestly you could use this to keep uh, all kinds of goodies in because the animal spirit actually comes in a standalone small box so this giant box isn't necessary just this little one is the giant box would be nice to sit on your bookshelf though and you could possibly keep you know little trinkets in this like little crystals uh incense cones lighters anything that would go near your little witchy section that you might want to hold on to that's pretty cool i like that i always love a good box though <laughs> And then I should probably mention that the artist of the animal spirit tarot deck uh, is Kim Kranz. Opening this up and taking a look inside. The cards are inside with a ribbon to be able to pull them out easily. Um, unwrapped, which is nice <laughs> since everything else was wrapped up so nicely. All right, we're going to set this aside. And we have our deck. So the back of the cards is uh, metallic, looks like snake scales. Very nice. The size of the cards are about the full size of my hand. And the cards themselves, look at how flimsy that is. Not flimsy in a bad way either. Like they're very sturdy feeling. Um, but these are going to be uh, extremely, extremely easy to riffle shuffle. These feel like broken in and nice. Like this is, this is nice. Very, very nice to riffle shuffle. This this deck feels like it's gonna break in nice. This might become one of my main favorite decks. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and start our flip through. So we begin with the earth symbol, the earth element, and we have the bear card. I may actually pull the book along with this and not read from the book, but just pull a couple of keywords to highlight what the card is supposed to be about. I'll read the, the top highlight sentence for each card. How about that? So the bear, waking from spiritual slumber and beginning anew, which is sort of like the fool card. Then we have the earthworm, who is shy, hesitant, and reluctant to share inner vision. Very cool. I love the colors in this deck. It's mostly a black and white deck with splashes of rainbow watercolor. Very bright and vibrant. I love the art style of this deck. After the earthworm, we come to the mouse. Little mouse. Detail-oriented, small mind, nitpicky, and nervous. Sounds like me. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know that I'm small-minded. After the mouse, we come to the rabbits. Beautiful reds and orange sunset in the background with the rabbit standing on his hind quarters. Who is afraid of everything, overwhelmed and frozen. Not quite what I was expecting from the rabbit energy, but it also makes sense. Sensitive, problem solver, and a good listener when it's in balance. When out of balance, over explains and talks fast. Bring into balance, have a day of silence. Oh my God. <laughs> That sounds so hard. Next, we come to the raccoon, who is talented, shadowy, and in hiding. When in balance, they're a generous friend and an exceptional artist. When they're out of balance, they're competitive and a starving artist. And to bring into balance, you have to make new work. Next, we come along to the beautiful fox, a lovely little chap, who is smart, a strong partner or mate, and a wise teacher. When in balance, they're magical, an ingenious teacher, and mono monogamous. When they're out of balance, they're sneaky and unsure of their identity. And in order to bring it into balance, they need partnership and connection. That's very cute. I didn't know that uh, foxes were so, that needed so much companionship, but it seems like they do. Next, we come to the snake, and this card is absolutely beautiful. It has the flower of life inside an Ouroboros, a snake eating its own tail. And this is a guardian of unawakened magic and creative potential. When it's in balance, it's prosperous, creative, and charismatic. When out of balance, starts and stops many things. And to bring it into balance, you need kundalini yoga or meditation. And this takes us to the buffalo with the lightning striking in the background. Grounded yet heavenly, practical yet spiritual. 
When in balance, they're trusting and a pure presence. When they're out of balance, they're restless and lack gratitude. And to bring it into balance, you need prayer and bhakti. And I actually don't know what the word bhakti means. So if you do, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Next up, we have the lamb. The lamb is peaceful, prophetic, and patient. Uh, when in balance, they have a knowingness and inner peace. When they're out of balance, they're quiet, timid, and concerned. And to bring it into balance, you need meditation and listening. This brings us to our next one, the elk, a black hole sun in the sky behind it. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be. It's what it looks like to me. Stable, resilient, headstrong, and the father. When they're in balance, they're supportive, kind, and consistent. When they're out of balance, they're pretentious, high and mighty. And to bring it into balance, you need to eat and drink more consciously. I really think I'm gonna enjoy working with these cards. Next, we have the deer, who is loving, intuitive, graceful, the mother. So the deer and the elk, the mother and the father, the emperor and the empress of this deck. The deer, when in balance, is receptive, compassionate, and nurturing. When she's out of balance, she's concerned and protective. And to bring it into balance, you need to be around nature or children. Next, we have the wolf, guardian of the family and tribe, activism and ritual. When in balance, they're reliable, democratic, and fearless. When they're out of balance, they're judgmental and dominating. And to bring them into balance, you need to practice letting go. Next, we have the spider. And this was actually the first card that was ever pulled for me out of this deck. The creator of prosperity through life's work, and dharma. When they're in balance, they're appreciative, enthusiastic, and prosperous. When they're out of balance, they're discouraged, tired, and forlorn. And to bring them into balance, they need playful creativity. Next, we have the horse. Momentum, freedom, expansive energy, and force. When they're in balance, they achieve anything and they never give up. When they're out of balance, they run away and they feel weak. And to bring it into balance, they need strength training. And we're moving into our next element now of water. The first step in the water is the crocodile, who is resting, submerging, collecting energy, and cooling off. They are wise, patient, and a silent powerhouse when they're in balance, but they feel stuck and lash out when they're out of balance. And in order to balance them, you need rest and makarasana pose. Makarasana pose, which must be a specific type of a tarot, I mean a yoga pose. Next up, we have the Stingray, who is developing confidence, a sense of self, or a spine. Oh, so interesting. So now I'm thinking about the evolution of animals throughout history and the purpose for which parts of animals were evolved and what they were needed for and how Stingrays, seemingly from this definition, I would guess, I don't know for sure, but they would be one of the first animals that developed a spine in the ocean maybe this got my brain working i don't know so when they're in balance they are eager and they want to grow when they're out of balance they blame others and they quit and when to bring them into balance you need to move through the discomfort next we have our good old fishy our little pisces restlessness change of focus and lost in the current when they're in balance they're adaptable and they travel well when they're out of balance they're distracted and change their mind often and to bring them into balance you need to set a small goal and accomplish it I love the the interpretations of these cards so far because they're very straightforward um, and they're spiritual and practical at the same time. Next we have the starfish who is beautiful, alluring, superficial, or shallow. When they're in balance, they're uplifting, artistic, and expressive. When they're out of balance, they gossip and they feel empty. And to bring them into balance, you need positive friends around you. Next up, we have the octopus, who if you were here for our last tarot unboxing, there was the Ostara tarot, uh, where they used a lot of animal spirits. I believe it was like the eight. Oh, probably was the eight because they have eight arms. <laughs> The octopus was the, the card used specifically to represent, I believe, the eights in that deck. All of the eights, or at least one card of every suit, the same number of every card of every suit. So the cool thing about the animal spirit deck working with the Ostara Tarot deck is that we'll kind of be able to use them t both of them in tandem to understand each of the other decks better. So the octopus is reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. When they're in balance, they're interested, engaged, and intelligent. When they're out of balance, they're needy, clingy, and they lack courage. And to bring them into balance, you need space for yourself and talk therapy. Next, we get to the beaver. Hard worker, loyal, tireless, family first. When they're in balance, happy, meaningful work. When they're out of balance, they feel useless and worn out. 
And to bring them into balance, you need physical labor and selfless service. Next, we have the oyster. And the oyster is patient, a secret keeper, hiding inner treasures. When they're it, oh, I like hiding inner treasures. It's very, like, logical because they got a little pearl inside. When they're in balance, they feel blessed, generous, and masterful. When they're out of balance, they feel reluctant, gripping, and they clam up. And to bring them into balance, you need to share something. Next up, we have the turtle, who is an ancient soul grounded, trusting, and they're at home in themselves. When they're in balance, they're peaceful, adventurous, and productive. Out of balance, they slow down to a halt, and to bring them into balance, you need to go on an adventure. Next, we got the Fwaugi, little Fwaug, who is clearing, cleansing, and healing. When they're in balance, they have clear energy and enthusiasm for life, but when they're out of balance, they're depleted and running on empty. To bring them into balance, you need to go to a lake, river, ocean, or bathhouse. So go around water, cleanse yourself. Next up is the Otter, unobstructed joy, playfulness, and contentment. When they're in balance, they're full of love and needs nothing. When they're out of balance, they're gloomy, sighs, and make silly excuses. And to bring them into balance, you need to have a dance party or a celebration. Otters are very cute. They're just water ferrets. Next up, we have the shark. Directness, exposure, revealing true nature and desire. When they're in balance, they're intriguing, captivating, and mysterious. When they're out of balance, they're sneaky and destructive. And to bring them into balance, you need honesty. Next, we have the swan, which has a bit of balance in the image of the card. Effortless creativity, sensitive mystic, and elegant power. When they're in balance, they have infinite creative power. When they're out of balance, they're agitated, snippy, and they lack vision. To bring them into balance, they need solo time and writing. And now we have a sweet, sweet dolphin who is innately intelligent, a healer, light, and full of blessings. They're an active healer, strong spiritual practice when they're in balance. They underestimate their own power when they're out of balance. And to bring them into balance, they need to be around like-minded spirits. Next up is the whale who desires to delve deeper, profound peace and ancient wisdom. When they're in balance, they're calm, steady, and deeply compassionate. When they're out of balance, they're heavy and they slip into an old story. And to bring them into balance, they need regular self-care. And now we're moving into our next element of fire. And we begin with the tiny yet destructive fire ant. The fire ant has aggression, rigid thinking, and they follow orders. When they're in balance, they're thoughtful and disciplined. When they're out of balance, they argue, excessive heat, and they gossip. And to bring them into balance, they need solo time and to take walks at night. Next, we have the hyena, who is who is humor, wit, and sarcasm. In balance, they're charming, witty, and fun to be around. Out of balance, they're scrappy, petty, and suspicious. And to bring them into balance, you need sobriety. I like that there's a half a moon in the back of this one. Next up is the scorpion, who is passionate, competitive, and tends toward isolation. When they're in balance, they're wild and free and fierce. When they're out of balance, they're jealous, resentful, and unresolved. And to bring them into balance, they need honesty and forgiveness. Next, we got the little lizard, who is instinctual, sensitive to the subtle, and a dreamer. When they're in balance, they are artistic, telepathic, and spiritual. When they're out of balance, they're elusive, non-committal, and flaky. And to bring them into balance, you need a creative project. Next up, we have the panther, who is annihilation of the unnecessary and a purging. When they're in balance, they're brave and productive. When they're out of balance, they're self-destructive. And to bring them into balance, you need to get rid of the unnecessary. I love it. I just went through a panther phase. Next up, we have the tarantula who is at a crossroad and claiming life's purpose. When they're in balance, they follow their intuition. And when they're out of balance, they hesitate and they have they over-intellectualize. And to bring them into balance, you need daily journaling. Next up, we have the goofy little camel with a crescent moon in the background, who is resourceful, independent, and they know oneself. When they're in balance, they're calm and content with a sparkle in their eye. And when they're out of balance, they're dehydrated and they lack vitality. And to bring them into balance, they need a pilgrimage. Next, we have the gazelle, who is a heightened awareness and nobility, and they're vulnerable. When they're in balance, they're graceful, perceptive, and artistic. When they're out of balance, there are food allergies, insomnia, and raceful, racing mind. To bring them into balance, you need yin yoga, a cozy home, or good food. Next, we have the cheetah, who is a solar force, action, achievement, and masculine energy. When they're in balance, they achieve anything with boundless energy. When they're out of balance, they're impatient and competitive. And to bring them into balance, they need to reconnect with their purpose. Next in the fire element, we have the tiger. I like that the big predator cats are fire elements. I find that really interesting. 
We have a crescent moon on the tiger's forehead. The tiger is a lunar force. They're, they have the ease and darkness and their feminine energy. When they're out of, when they're in balance, they're passionate, strong, and sensual. When they're out of balance, they're overstimulated. And to bring them into balance, they need trataka. And in parentheses, it says candle gazing. So it seems also like maybe connecting with fire a little bit. Next in fire, we have the cobra. The cobra is pausing, waiting, and the inner teacher. When they're in balance, they're a student of life, humble and wise. When they're out of balance, they're a know-it-all and egocentric. And to bring them into balance, they need to take a class and study. Next, we have the zebra, who is eccentric, creative, and a visionary. When they're in balance, they're worldly, enthusiastic, and fashion forward. When they're out of balance, they're jaded, pouty, and vain. And to bring them into balance, they need an epic adventure or some art. Next, we have the lion, who is patient, regal, and a complete master. When they're in balance, they're, in, they're the epitome of peace and strength. When they're out of balance, they're withdrawn and too serious. And to bring them into balance, you need daily meditation and friendship. Finally, in the element of fire, we have the elephant, who is unstoppable, auspicious, and wise. When they're in balance, they're one, they have a one-pointed focus, they're generous and loving. When they're out of balance, they misunderstand fate, and to bring them into balance, you need trust fire in his little his little what do you call it trunk now we're entering the next element of air we begin here with the moth specifically a luna moth who is impulsive hasty and wishful when they're in balance they're enthusiastic and whimsical when they're out of balance they idealize others and they're jittery and to bring them into balance you need to finish a project next is the beautiful butterfly and they are undergoing great train great change and transformation when they're in balance they're cheerful and graceful when they're out of balance they're fragile and frustrated and to bring them into balance you need a daily routine wow that's interesting the butterfly i feel like is a symbol that i've been very connected with for the last couple of years and a daily routine has been a a driving focus of mine like i have felt this strong need to have a very good daily routine that's very interesting Next in air, we have the bat, darkness, letting go, and death leading to rebirth. When they're in balance, they accept, adapt, and adjust. When they're out of balance, they refuse to let go, and they reminisce. And to bring them into balance, you need to watch the sunrise. There's a big full moon right behind this glorious little bat. And we have the firefly, inspired and fantastic, yet fleeting. When they're in balance, they write, create, and brainstorm. When they're out of balance, they're burnt out and feel dull. And to bring them into balance, they need to write a poem or draw. Next up is the bee, who is earnest, hardworking, and democratic. When they're in balance, they're content, active, and vibrant. When they're out of balance, they're overworked and annoyed. And to bring them into balance, they need a little mini vacation. Next up, we have the hummingbird. And this symbol must be, or this image must be used a lot for this because I'm very familiar with this visual from this deck. The hummingbird is positive, enthusiastic, and spiritually resourceful. When they're in balance, they're smart, curious, and love to learn. But when they're out of balance, they're pushy, insistent, and sharp. To bring them into balance, they need to take a class. Next, we have this grumpy looking vulture, a guardian, and purifier. And they're essential for rebalance. When they're in balance, they clarify and reveal wisdom. But when they're out of balance, they're dramatic and aggressive. And to bring them into balance, clean your space and sage. Next, we have the crow who is spiritually strong, creative, and watchful. When they're in balance, they're psychic, strong, and clear. When they're out of balance, they're ungrounded and hypersensitive. And to bring them into balance, they need a daily meditation practice. Next up is the owl who is abundance, clairvoyant, and treasures. When they're in balance, they're generous, trusting, and secure. When they're out of balance, they have money quarrels and scarcity. And to bring them into balance, you need an offering. Next, we have the dragonfly, which is my mother's favorite creature. They are a master of light, illusion, and the mind. When they're in balance, they see clearly, joyful, and they're magical. When they're out of balance, they can't concentrate and they have a busy, a busy mind. To bring them into balance, you need to focus on the breath. Next, we have a nightingale with a fearless voice, speech, communication, or song. When they're in balance, they sing and speak freely with kindness. When they're out of balance, they're shy with a lump in their throat, and to bring them into balance, they need music. Next, we have the peacock, who has an inner beauty, compassion, and assimilator of anything. When they're in balance, they're confident and kind. When they're out of balance, they can't digest situations. And to bring them into balance, meditation on the navel specifically, so the solar chakra. Next, we have the hawk, who is watchful, all-seeing, and a messenger of divinity. 
When they're in balance, they see clearly and they're intuitive. When they're out of balance, they see too much and they're suspicious. And to bring them into balance, they'll need a perspective shift. Next, we have the eagle, who is all-pervading power, a truth seeker and transforms karma. So when they're in balance, they're bright, radiant, and challenges. When they're out of balance, they're controlling. And to bring them into balance, they need to step into the unknown. And that concludes the four main elements. And now we're going to be moving into the element of spirits. There are not nearly as many cards here. It looks like we have seven cards of spirit. And these cards actually have more than one page written on them in the book. Each of these corresponds with a specific chakra, which is why there are seven. First up, we have the phoenix. The phoenix is freedom from suffering and past karma and reincarnation. So the phoenix is the root chakra. The ancient yogis believed that our heaviest karmas reside in the first chakra. This earthen center is also called muladhara, or our root. The, as the ascent of the phoenix begins here, and as the entanglement of karmas is slowly burned, it rises from the ash toward the navel center. Again and again, it makes this journey from first to third chakra, purifying our essence and freeing us from the past. After the phoenix is the sea serpent, who is about healing emotional wounds and expressing desires. We see again an Ouroboros symbolism with an eyeball, it looks like. Sea serpent is the second chakra. The subtle energy of the sea serpent occupies the area of the Sadhistana, Svadhistana chakra, located deep within the pelvic bowel. This chakra is known as our center of creativity and desire and is associated with the water element. Svadhistana translate, uh, translates as in her own abode, indicating this chakra is the home of the divine mother or Kundalini herself. Next, we have the dragon who is the cover of this entire tarot deck. And they are seeing one's most true self and balancing the ego. I love this. The dragon sees everything. Its essence has been with us since before our first breath and will be there at our last. The dragon is the third chakra. The subtle energy of the dragon lives at the navel center in the Manipura chakra. Manipura translates to the city of the hidden gems, and behind its gates burns the fire of our transformation and digestion. The sages believe health of the fire at the navel center is what governs our ability to clearly see both the inner and outer dimensions. Our fourth spirit card is the golden egg, which is the message at the center of the heart, the unstruck sound. The golden egg is the fourth chakra. The subtle essence of the golden egg is nestled deep with the heart center at the fourth chakra. This chakra, called Anahata, is the home of the self or soul. By bringing the mind into the center, we discover a portal to the most intimate and luminous space. It is said our inner guide sits there in deep meditation waiting for us. Anahata translates to the unstruck sound. And that makes me think of heart strings. And after the golden egg, we have the black egg. The black egg is speaking from an authentic voice and the truth. This corresponds with the fifth chakra or the throat chakra. The subtle essence of this card resides at the base of the throat at the Vishuddha chakra. The ancient sages saw this center as the hub that governs our speech and expression. Vishuddha translates as especially pure. The balance of this center is important for all of us, but is especially essential for writers, editors, musicians, and teachers. Next, we have the unicorn who is reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. The unicorn is the sixth chakra, which is very interesting because the location of a unicorn's horn is right over the third eye. That's pretty cool. It's no surprise the subtle essence of the unicorn card resides at the third eye, the exact place from which the unicorn's horn extends. This center is called the Ajna Chakra or Command Center. The ancient yogis believed it to be responsible for our intellect, intuition, and deepest wisdom. Some say our two eyes see the past and present while the third eye peers into the future. And finally, we have the cosmic egg, which is completion and harmony, the infinite within the finite. And this corresponds with the seventh chakra or the crown chakra. The subtle essence of the cosmic egg resides at the crown chakra at the top of the head called Sahasrara. I am butchering all of the pronunciations of those I know, I'm sorry. One of the aims of yoga and meditation practices is to channel energy from the base of the spine upward towards the Sahasrara. Each of the six lower chakras plays an important role along this journey, and once the final epicenter of consciousness is activated, it is said to radiate the light of a million suns. And that is the final card in the spirit animal deck, and that is the final page of the book as well. So I'm just going to give these a couple of nice shuffles and see how they actually do. Yes, yes, yes. What a great, what a great riffle shuffle. We love it. We love to see it. 
We love to feel it. So I was watching my friend Dugsley do some tarot readings the other day and she was saying that in order, she read somewhere or saw somewhere that in order to truly randomize, oops, in order to truly randomize a deck, you need seven good riffle shuffles and that will truly randomize the order. So that was our third. So they bend really nice one way, but not quite the other way yet. So the ruffle, riffle shuffles are gonna, this deck's gonna need a little bit of breaking in so that the riffle shuffles are nice and smooth. See if we can get a card to pop out. See what our little spirit animal is for this video. The black egg. That feels like quite an ominous one to pull for our very first card from this deck. Let's take a look at it in the book. This is speaking from an authentic voice and the truth. The black egg contains one of life's essential treasures, the truth. Inside of it resides no confusion, excuses, small talk, noise, or lies, not even white ones. This living and breathing vessel harbors only that which rings true. When this essence is in balance, we speak slowly and clearly. We are drawn to activities like writing, reading, teaching, singing, or perhaps public speaking. Sound draws us in. Books draw us in. The concept of truth itself draws us in. We start asking questions like, what do I know to be true about myself? And what is true about the world? When the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed, we speak from an unsure place. We say things others want to hear, gossip, or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. We might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment, in every situation. It's the epicenter of truth and the birthplace of our voice. It's interesting for me to, to draw this one because it does feel, it was like kind of triggering some memories and stuff to come to the surface of like gossiping and telling the same stories over and over and over again. Sort of how it's corresponding with the Vishuddha, throat chakra, um, which is expression. And it was talking about speaking slowly and clearly, and I am a notorious rapid speaker. So it feels like kind of the right card for me to draw first and foremost. This is a very, very nice, very nice deck, very interesting deck, and not like any other deck that I have in my collection. So I think this will add a very nice, the fox is really drawing my attention, but I've been really gravitating towards foxes a lot lately. I think this is going to add a nice flavor to my tarot readings. Uh, to have some animals pulled in. So yeah, I guess that's going to wrap this up for, wrap it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I will be back next week with a collective tarot reading, pick a card for the new moon in Gemini. Uh, it's also my birthday this week, so. <laughs> all right, well, I will see y'all in the next video. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.